Good morning and welcome to the Presence of Light Talk with Charlie Riverman Bergeron here on <clears throat> Humanity Healing. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat a little bit. <clears throat> you may see some smoke rising. That's uh, some Palo Santo that I lit to uh, clear the energies of this amazing day, um, which uh, is day one of the Mayan calendar. Yesterday was the day, um, I forget what they call it, the day without time or the day out of time. And it's an opportunity for us to begin again, uh, begin anew is the word that is coming through. And today's talk is about nourish and nurture. Those were two words that appeared very clearly to me this morning as I was complaining about all my aches and pains. <laughs> and I, I know we all have those. So uh, some of them are physical, uh, some of them are emotional, uh, some of them uh, we just don't know where they came from or why do we have to have them. What I've learned in my journey, and I think each of us learn in our journey that uh, within what we call this process of life there is a lot of pain and suffering and uh i was talking to a friend yesterday and uh, we both looked and realized that uh the pain and suffering sometimes gives us an opportunity to deepen our relationship with who we are on a spiritual nature and uh, part of the process of overcoming that um, pain and suffering is part of the journey that as we walk down these pathways of what we call human life, uh, we stumble and we fall, we kick our toe on a rock or uh, we trip over a, a stick. It's much like walking through uh, the wilderness. And as a result of that, uh, we come to a place where we have to nourish ourselves and heal ourselves. And we've been entrained over uh, years and lifetimes to rely on somebody else to do this for us. We call a doctor, we call the minister or the spiritual healer, or we call on somebody else. We're always passing this process of healing um, onto somebody else, thinking that, well, that's their job. They they know what to do. What have we What have we really discovered? That most of them are going through the same thing we are. And while they may be wise and may have some um, salves or ointments or some uh, something to give us an opportunity to heal quick more quickly or recover more quickly. The real process of healing and moving forward is, is ours. This is what we do here in this physical body. So nourish and nurture came, came up and uh, I wrote uh, just a few minutes ago, um, this quote, uh, I quoted it as, forgive yourself for you are a far greater being than your little self can imagine. So good morning to each of you, um, whether you're in your little self or your full self. I welcome you and appreciate you showing up this morning. I see Sandra, Hakeem, uh, Greg, and uh, for all of those of you who are uh, arriving, and we'll see this later. Uh, thank you all for showing humanity healing, and thank you uh, to the creators of humanity healing for this beautiful space in the world where we can come and join and listen and realize we're not alone, that each one of us are uh, unique yet not separate. Uh, the, the, the field of unity. Uh, really expresses itself here. 
So with that said, I, I wrote some notes this morning and pulled some cards, which I, I love to do. And um, the first thing I wanted to share was the definitions of nourish and nurture. And so these, I, you know, I looked and I say, is there a difference between nourishing and nurturing? Um, they both seem and appear as the same. Uh, they both mean the same in different ways. So nourish means to provide things for growth or development. Um, that's it's when you nourish your, your action, it's almost like feeding something, you're, you're um, promoting it. And um, just as we would with our children um, is to uh, feed them so that they grow. Or if you take a plant um, and uh, you nourish the plant seeds, with water and sunlight and it grows so nourish is that act of manifesting your desire for growth nurturing is this is very similar but it means to take care of and encourage the growth so once you start that process of growth within yourself or within that seed you now have to nourish it and take care of that and make sure that um, it's getting the right amount of sun. You just can't just throw it out and say, oh, make it work. You have to take care of that. You have to encourage and, and, uh, and prune it. And uh, when you have dead spots on the plant, you cut it off. So there's a caring process. So it's, it's both encouraging it to grow and then taking care of it while it is growing this was my message this morning about myself really and as i say i'm no different than any of you and many times as i looked at it briefly i said wow i have really not done as good of a job as i could have and while I have all these wonderful guides and teachers and I still have the ability to override everything and do it my way, <laughs> which we all know when you do it your way, you have to uh, uh, suffer the consequences. And so here we go back to the process of suffering. How do we, you know, suffering as a teaching guide. And it's a signal system that says, hey, you're off the path or you're, 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 you're riding over the rocks or you're going through the trees. There's a big one coming. Pay attention. So um, I pulled a, a soul inspiration card by my friend Mia um, on this beautiful thing of flowers. And I just noticed the flowers this morning. So how interesting I'm talking about flower growth. And here it is. Uh, and that the message of that card was nourish what you love and watch it grow. Wow. Uh, when I see these things, I get, I get chills. I get, you know, I, I'm always amazed at the gift of so many beautiful beings in my life that I can't see with my eyes or I can't hold with my hands, but I know are with me at every moment of my journey. And I want to share that with you because as we enter this day one of the Mayan calendar, we should remember that the path we're on has been repeated psychically for thousands and thousands of years. This is not new. This is cyclical. Yet the newness occurs in us. If we don't pay attention to it, it becomes just another day on a long line of days and it becomes boring, mundane, and, and can be quite tedious and frustrating. I want you, I want to encourage each of you to look at every day as a new opportunity. We cyclically planned weeks, years, and et cetera. But every day 
is an opportunity at a point to plant the seeds. And when we plant those seeds that need to be nourished and nurtured, what we're saying to the universe is yes. Call it creator if you want, whatever you believe is the empowering force in your life. Say yes. And so the next card I pulled this morning, interesting, caught my attention by this beautiful picture. Look at this beautiful dynamic energy. This is, um, as they say, it's a supernova, a supernova rem, remnant. Um, it's a, sort of, it looks, they explain it as a violent and chaotic looking mass of gas and dust. When I saw that, I saw a beautiful flower. I don't know which way you turn it, but look at that. There we go. <laughs> Didn't say I could figure this all out, did I? Beautiful flower. And that's what caught my attention was, wow, the flowering universe. And the message from that card, which is called their space meditation, sacred space meditation cards. They're very big and challenging to handle, but the, the messages and the pictures are, are gorgeous. It is universal wonders. So what is a universal wonder? To me, that was, that's what caught me this morning was that wondrous beauty of that um, supernova. I remember an experience many, many, many billions of years ago. People say I'm crazy when I say this, but I remember that I came from an ancient, ancient star system originally. My original energy came forth out of it and it had a supernova. And where I lived in that, uh, space and time doesn't exist anymore. It has become part of everything else, including this earth. And so when we think about the universe and our life as humans, I also want you to think about the greater self, the higher self, the self that you've thought about but we're too fearful to express in anybody, with anybody. And right now it's the time for us to step into who we truly are. We're not just humans. We're far more than humans. And we can only express that if we allow ourselves the space and encourage ourselves to grow within the new fields of energy that are occurring, are occurring on this planet as a result of the evolution of everything. And so that universal wonders card embodies that. And the statements are, I accept love guidance and peace. The wonders of the universe are mine. May I never lose sight of source. Now, I'm not here to tell you what any of those are because each one of us have a connection to it, a unique connection to it. We're not ever separated, but we have a uniqueness, a powerful energetic uniqueness, a combination of energies as well that establishes our presence so that we can recognize each other and we can honor each other and work together, whether it be in small groups or large groups. But even in those groups, 
we find the need to have to nourish and nurture the seed thought in any group is a focus point but if you don't nourish or nurture it what happens you lose interest you drift away or you get chaos and arguments what happens in the larger perspective happens in the minutia of ourselves within our cellular system our physical bodies are filled with this chaotic energy and we have to dive deeper into our own self and nourish and nurture ourselves even on a cellular level that came out of an acupuncture section session yesterday on my shoulder which has been hurting everything is uniquely woven together in a fabric and right now we're in the process of reweaving the fabric and reconnecting the broken fibers of this amazing tapestry that each one of us are a part of we are restoring restoring the sacred fabric of life thank you so then the next cards i played with were uh, are called life cards which is a new deck and um just a simple card and it has sort of the opposites nurture and take so nurture i didn't plan this i just pick a deck card out of the deck was nurture and nurture in that reading was um says kindness manages resources giving is receiving and then the opposite said take what belongs to you or another everything eats and the picture on it was a, a, a in the book was a tiger mother or it's on the card I, I believe yeah tiger with its child and what does that resemble a mother taking care of its child so as I said in the beginning mm -hmm. nurturing a mother taking care of its child and, and overseeing and realizing that we are all here eating of everything that is given to us to sustain us that everything is we all eat we all eat of the fruits of the trees of the we all eat we all need that sustenance but it's not just about sustenance because that can be just taking that can be just taking out of greed taking out of uh, power and control but that doesn't nurture us if you look around the world today and you look at the leadership in the world there is no nurturing there's taking 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 and they claim they're doing wonderful things for everyone but there's no real proof because the destruction that's happening in the taking is overriding the nurturing that they supposedly say they are giving so too in us we have to balance and look when are we taking things and not respecting where they're coming from because when we take something away or take something out of it out of nature out of its own presence to use her our own nourishment we must respect that we have to honor that energy whether it's a being whether it's an animal a flower a plant it doesn't matter 
We, we are being called right now to respect life in a completely whole manner. Whole, holy, same. We must honor all life, all energy. As I scroll down, yeah, okay, a few people, more have arrived. Thank you all for joining me. I love to do this show. I love to do this talk. It has been a gift that has opened me uh, so much to speak with you and share what I'm going through so that you can recognize in yourself those parts of me that I am processing. We're not different. Doesn't matter if we have hair or we don't have hair. Doesn't matter if we have what skin color we are. Doesn't matter what form of God we think is great. None of that is important anymore. What's important is what's in our hearts and how are we co-creating from this space, from this deep space of love and light. Okay, one more card. Yeah, I have another card. Stemera, the angel, it's an angel card, and the card is forgiveness. I don't know if I can get that in focus, tilt it a little, there you go. So, what is forgiveness? We look like we have somebody playing music in the background. We have an angel and uh, something that the, another angel is touching, but it's, and then reaching down into somebody who's kneeling on their knees. Powerful. Forgiveness. For giving. I, I say this all the time. Break the words down. The words have meanings. The words have a tone. The words have a vibration. Uh, the syllables create a harmonic. For Forgiveness. The card basically begin in the beginning of the card reads, forgive yourself in order for healing to be complete. It's not possible to go back and change the past, but you can change how you feel about it. Forgiveness has a rhythm all its own as you progress through the process of release and healing. And I would suggest at this point that release and healing is a part of nourishing and nurturing. We are just beautiful flowers in an amazing garden. And that garden is filled with earth that is not only welcoming us, but willing to receive what we need to be rid of. Offer your pain, your sufferings to Mother Earth. She's strong enough to hold it all. She's strong enough 
to process it and release it for you. This is the divine mother energy. This is what divine mother earth wants to do for you. This is a relationship we chose to have with Mother Earth, Mother Gaia, Pachamama, whatever name you want to apply to it, millions of years ago. Millions of years ago when we came from the stars and became these human hybrids. And it's now time to end the charade of we're just this or we're just that. And tap into a field of awareness that creates universal wonders and become those universal wonders by nourishing and nurturing this being, this human being that has come so many thousands of years through all of the anger the betrayal, the abuse that each of us carry every day of our lives, release it to Mother Earth and thank her for her presence, her continual presence and willingness, willingness to Forgive because she is for giving. She is always giving and she is the image that we should somewhere in our hearts represent now is to be for giving. Give and give and give. It's hard. It's hard when we have all of these memories, these past memories, these pains, these sufferings, these belief systems that hold us from being that universal wonder that we really are. So I invite you today to think about how you can nourish and nurture yourself. Not for me not from Mother Earth, but for you, so that your light can shine forth and assist others in their nourishing and nourishing. Come to a place of forgiveness. The reading goes on to say, it is not possible to go back and change the past, but you can change how you feel about it. This is what's important right now, is to change how we feel about the past, to look at it differently. And forgiveness has a rhythm all its own as you progress through the process of release and healing. And as I said, Release it. Find a place in Mother Nature where you can release it. We can't force forgiveness. The reading says, if you force forgiveness, you have not yet learned the lesson of acceptance. We have been taught to blame our feelings rather than our experience for unpleasantness. 
no matter how far away you push feelings, they're still yours. It says they are yours, but I'm going to say they are still yours. We are the ones who feel. Without us, there are no feelings. They don't exist. It's what we do. It's an energetic process. We take that energy, emotion, energy, emotion. I call it energy, motion. And what we do with that can either assist us in our nourishing and nurturing, or it will destroy us and punish us. It's our choice. No matter how far away you push the feelings or that energy, that energy motion, it's ours. And at some point, it will come back to you. This is the struggle. We seek to release but part of what we're trying to release is really, truly who we are. We are these energy beings. We're these amazing energy beings. And so that led me to the quote that I put at the top of this session. Forgive yourself, for you are far greater, a far greater being, rather, than your little self can imagine. I love you all. You are me. I am you. As I say in my closings. Be at peace this week. Think about nourishing and nurturing and how you might be able to just tweak it a little so that it's more important in your life. And begin with yourself. Because in nourishing and nurturing yourself, you will automatically begin to nourish and nurture those around you. Yeah, many of them will, will reject you for it, but I promise you, you will be the better for all of it. And so with that, I'm complete. I thank you, uh, each one of you for showing up, uh, paying attention, listening, just honoring who you are in seeking um, a better way of life for yourself and your families and others, uh, as we all are now in these times of, of extreme turbulence and chaos. We can do this because we are amazing, amazing beings. With that, I'm complete. I love you. I thank you. I respect you. I am you. You are me, and we are unity. Have a great week. Be blessed and bless others. Love you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye-bye.